All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So we are back again today with probably the most competitive deck in the BT8 format. Um, you know, it's either this or Yellow Hybrid that's winning every tournament that's happening. Um, so yeah, without a doubt, this is one of the most top tier decks you're gonna get this format. This is gonna be Imperial. So I put a lot of hours into this deck, a lot of playtesting, trying to figure out the best way to optimize this list. And so the list that I'm bringing you today is the finished product of those hours. So uh, if you guys appreciate the work that I do or appreciate the content this channel s provides, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And without further ado, here is gonna be the deck list. The only egg that we're playing is gonna be four copies of Demi Vimon the only one you need. You will be winning before you hit your fifth egg, and you utilize your raising area a lot, so uh, this card is very important. Now onto the rookies. We'll start off with the only rookie that isn't Vmon. I play two copies of Madoki Beta. This card is 100% necessary, so this is going to be something that you're pulling out a lot of times off of Imperial Dramon. Um, Whenever you evolve into the dragon mode, you get to play a level 4 or lower blue or green. Or blue and green, my bad. And this is going to be the blue target that you're pulling back a lot of the time. You know, blocking your opponent from playing their memory boost, blocking them from playing hammer spark, uh, blocking them from gaining memory off of cards like this Vmon. Um, this card is just absolutely key, and you need to be playing at least two of it. You don't necessarily need to be playing more than that, because you do have tons of draw. So, you are always going to run into this card in your games. So, going on to the level 3s, I got 4 copies of the EX1 Vmon. This card gains you extra memory whenever you swing with Pyildramon. Uh, that's pretty nuts. And you even have the chance to get 2 of these under Pyildramon in very niche scenarios. And, uh, you know, getting a double Hammer Spark in situations like that just feels absolutely absurd. Uh, this Vmon is a key enabler, because if you if you have this under the Pyildramon, then you can basically make it so that um, you, can, you can swing with it, go up to the 4 memory, go into the dragon mode, tap your Davis Ken, unsuspend the dragon mode, and then swing with that, and you're just getting so much extra attacks with any stray memory that you're getting in this deck, so maxing out on the cards that give you the stray memory is pretty key. So we have four copies of this one. We have four copies of the Searcher Vmon from the starter deck. So this is my favorite Searcher in the list. Um, it can grab Stingmon, which is pretty important. There are a lot of times that you need a specific level four or a specific rookie. Um, like this card also searches your rookies, which the BT8 Vmon does not. Um, but yeah, no, this card searches every important card in the deck, except Megadeth and your Tamers, but we have the BT-8 Vmon to search the Megadeth and the Tamers. I play two copies of that. So the reason I'm only playing two of this and not four like the other Vmon is because there, I feel like there's only room for six Vmon searchers in the list. I feel like six searchers is the optimal number, and hitting, or being able to hit anything is being able to hit, or is more important than being able to hit the Megadeth sometimes, but you do need to search the Megadeth sometimes, so you still play two copies of this card. Um, there are also times where you just need a specific piece, and that specific piece is a dual color card. And sometimes you want to look at four cards instead of three. So in situations like that, this is better. But generically speaking, I think the Vmon from the starter deck is the stronger search option. But, you know, we can't play six copies of that card, so uh, four and two split is what I'm, what I'm preferring. And then the last rookie in the list is going to be two copies of the Jamming Vmon. So the Vmon from the Ulforce deck is only good if you see it in the first turn, and I don't feel like that's good enough to play. The Vmon from BT2 is good, but it's only good if you're already popping off. This Vmon helps enable you in some of your key plays. 
So, like, if you're opening, you're starting your opening hand, and you open this Vmon, you can slap this on a Demi Vmon, uh, promote it on your next turn, swing with it, and get another, and get a free draw. So, typically, what you're doing is you're spending your memory to set up, like, a Tamer, or to set up, like, cards that are going to search you into your key pieces. So, having a rookie that you can swing with, guarantee that it's going to survive, and then draw off of your egg is absolutely key. Um, plus, you run, up, you run into a lot of situations where you can swing with this card, guarantee that you live the security check, evolve it into a level 4, and then get the Jawgrass that way, because you don't want to swing with your level 4s all the time, because you don't want to put them at risk. Um, that's always fun. And I've won a lot of games by swinging that their last security with this card, and then evolving this card into Magnemon, and then unsuspending and winning the game that way. So, I do think the Jamming Vmon is the best Vmon that you can play in the, your last two slots. And I'm considering dropping a BT8 Vmon to uh, bump this card up to three. So, moving right along, we got the level fours. We got four of the best level four in the deck. We got X Vmon. We got four Stingmon. This is the card that you're oftentimes digging for. Um, you know, just being able to play it for three and get your Jawgrass plays that way is absolutely key. I only play three copies of Lytramon. It's a blue and a green card, which is the best value that it provides. Its effect comes up a lot in the Mastamon matchup, and... It comes up very, very rarely in some other matchups. Um, it comes up a lot in the mirror match as well. Like you can suspend their Vmons that they're searching with and make and swing over them and make sure that they can't evolve on top of them. Um, that's always fun. But uh, yeah, this card does almost nothing against decks like X Antibody um, and like Black War Greymon and stuff. Other than being a both a blue and a green source under Pyultramon, which is reason enough to play the card so i do play three copies of that and then the last level fours that we're playing is two copies of magnamon so this is a little bit more expensive to evolve over um than all of your other level fours however it's a big blocker it provides a lot of protection you can make this card hit nine thousand consistently sometimes you can make this card go up to eleven thousand i've had that happen very rarely you get bigger than that but there are a lot of games where you are pulling this out of your sources with your Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode and setting up for an unbreakable board that your opponent just can't do anything about, where you win game the next turn. And uh, I feel like that's good enough to justify playing two copies of this card. So we also are playing the Chimera Mon in the list so that you can just shove this under your sources and get the four colors that way. And so playing two of this ensures that you're going to see one before you see the Chimera Mon. That's always really nice. But it's also just a big blue source. Like, you can put up a Magnamon and sit on it and start building up a second card in your raising area and force your opponent to deal with the Magnamon. And if they can't, then you can Jawgrass off of that. And you didn't even have to see key cards like Stingmon in order to get that to go off, so... Uh, Magnamon is just absolutely essential for the deck, and I'm surprised more people haven't been playing this uh, before Primitive topped with it. So, yeah, those are those are my level fours. We play thirteen of them. On to the level fives. We play four copies of the best card in the deck, Pyildramon, and then we play two copies of Chimeramon. So this card hits twelve thousand power consistently. This card just is a mini board wipe for all of their small things. Chimera Mon is just really good. I also really, really like Dino Beamon. However, I am playing two Magnamon, so I felt like it was foolish to not play two Chimera. Uh, if I was going to go down on the Magnamon count at all, then I would go to a one and one split of Chimera and Dino Bee, because both of both of these cards are absolutely worth playing. And I think one and one is kind of the optimal split. But if you are playing a bunch of Magnemons, then you should be playing two copies of this card instead. So, moving right along to the level sixes, I got two copies of Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode. 
and one copy of fighter mode. So I am playing less level sixes than most people in this list, and I realize that. I feel like four is the number that you will see most people use. I'm playing three. I just wanted space for more consistent cards. I'm winning the game a lot of the time before I hit level six. You're only playing multiple level sixes in longer games, like uh, against Yellow Hybrid, and you have a lot of cards to search these out. So I don't feel like it's mandatory to play any more than this. If I was going to go up at all, I would probably bump up the fighter mode, just because it combos really nicely with Chimera. But dragon mode is absolutely key. Uh, you can evolve into this, pull out your combo pieces, and then go into a second Pyildra and win the game that way. Or you can uh, evolve on this to end your turn and pull out like a Madoki Beta or a Magnamon, and then like a Rageramon or a Stingmon, and just stop your opponent from doing anything. So this card is absolutely key, uh, but fighter mode also puts your opponent in a position, like if you get this card in play and you put your opponent in a position where they don't immediately answer it, you win the game, just right then and there. This is just swinging over all of their security. It's swinging over anything that they try to play and establish. Um, this card is just freaking phenomenal and i absolutely love fighter mode in this game so i don't think i'd change level six lineup at all there is one card like the 50th card in this list is kind of a flex slot and it's the only card in the list that i'm currently undecided on um that card could be the second fighter mode but there are a lot of times like the only times you lose with this deck are the times that you open just a fistful of high level digimon or a fistful of like hammer sparks and you can't play anything um, and for that reason and that reason alone, I'm cutting down on the level sixes and the hammer sparks in the list. So, um, yeah, that's it for the Digimon on the options. Uh, I kind of hinted at it earlier, but I only play three copies of hammer spark. Um, in most blue decks, I say that it's pretty mandatory to play as many copies of this card as you can. However, this is... This deck is so consistent and draws so many cards, and the only times that you get slow starts are the times that you just clump, and you get just a bunch of cards that don't progress your game state, and this isn't a card that progressively or directly progresses your game state by itself. This card has to be in conjunction with other cards in order to do that, and so for that reason, in your five card opening, you don't want to see multiple copies of this. So for that reason and that reason alone, I'm playing three. The 50th card in the list that I was just talking about is actually the third Hammer Spark. Um, up until a day or two ago, this was actually the second copy of Blue Memory Boost. Um, and the reason I was playing two copies of Blue Memory Boost was because this card just increases the overall consistency. This is a pretty consistent deck just because of the number of cards that you can draw, but the only times that you lose are the times that you brick in your opening, or if your opponent just completely shuts you out. And being able to not brick in your opening is something that you can help optimize in your deck building by playing cards like Blue Memory Boost and by playing uh, the three copies of Davis. Um, as well as the Searcher Vmons. So, I was playing two Blue Memory Boosts, now I'm only playing one. I took that second Blue Memory Boost out for the, uh, the third Hammer Spark, but... Yeah, I'm liking this so far, but this Hammer Spark slot could change. Uh, the rest of the options, I got the one of Ice Wall, because I can only play one. The one of HPD, because I can only play one. And then the three copies of Megadeth, because this is how you win matchups that are hard. Um, basically, any hard matchup is the matchup that you want to see Megadeth against, so uh, that's where we're at with that card. And then the last cards in the list are the two copies of Davis Ken to get you more memory and to help unsuspend your Digimon and make you go off even harder. And then I play the three copies of Davis. I'm not playing two Davis and one Mimi. 
um, because, again, this card helps improve the consistency of your list. The, the, the power ceiling of this deck is already high enough. You don't need to play cards like Paladin Mode um, or Mimi. You need to be playing cards that find you your combo pieces, like Davis, like Blue Memory Boost. Um, and that's what I found in playing the list, because uh, this is a very, very strong deck that has the potential to carry players throughout the entire tournament. Um, and the only real decisions that you have to make are how many Hammer Sparks I want to play, um, if I want to play Chimera Mon over Dino B, and exactly what I want my Vmon lineup to be on the bottom end. But a lot of the lists that you will find are pretty similar for this deck. I would say this is a deck that is mostly solved throughout the format. Um, but there is still a lot of innovation to be made. You know, this is a very, very strong list, and we will continue to see it topping for the remainder of the format. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.